Hello, my name is Tony Pike and I am the founder of CAT3C. CAT3C is designed to provide supplemental training as you work your way through your ATPL studies. To help you achieve your goal of becoming a professional pilot, CAT3C have developed an invaluable series of unique EASA ATPL exam passbooks, which have been specifically designed for the iPad and are available in the Apple iBook store. The passbooks contain hundreds of exam style questions and are supported by clear in-depth explanations and interactive diagrams. The link to the iBooks can be found on the webpage below or at the CAT3C website at the Bookstore tab. Additionally, we currently deliver three-day classroom-based general navigation courses and will also be providing future interactive online training sessions plus a range of pre-recorded video seminars. More information on our online sessions and our three-day UK-based classroom training courses can be found at our website www.cat3c.com But for now, sit back and enjoy this QEV. An aircraft is at position north 53 degrees, west 6 degrees and has observed a landmark located at position north 52 degrees 47 minutes, west 4 degrees 45 minutes on a relative bearing of 060 degrees. The compass heading equals 051 degrees compass, magnetic variation is 16 west and compass deviation is 2 degrees east. What is the true bearing of the position line to be plotted from the landmark to the aircraft's position on a Lambert's conformal conical chart with standard parallels at 37 north and 65 north? Options are A 250 degrees true, B 278 degrees true, C 277 degrees true and D 276 degrees true. Now this looks a very very involved question on the face of it. However it's nowhere near as difficult as it seems at first. The first thing to do is to realize from the answers that the all of the options are in a westerly direction. Therefore the landmark must be to the east of the aircraft and we can prove this from a very simple diagram. We note it's a northern hemisphere chart, so our two meridians are converging at the top, both pointing to north. We have a track line between the two positions, and the positions of the aircraft are at west 6 degrees and at the landmark west 445 degrees. Well, in a westerly direction, the lower numbers would be to the right and the higher numbers to the left. So that must be west 006 degrees and that must be west 004 degrees 45 minutes. Therefore, the aircraft is at this position and the landmark is at that position. We've been asked to work out the true bearing from the landmark to the aircraft, which is that angle measured from north in a clockwise direction, stopping at the track line. However, before we can calculate that angle, we need to know the bearing from the aircraft to the landmark measured at the aircraft, or that angle. We can calculate this quite simply. We've been given the information. The first thing we've given is a compass heading for the aircraft, we're given deviation, we're given magnetic variation, and we can calculate true. So the compass heading is 051 compass. The deviation is 2 degrees east. The variation is 16 degrees west. And we can now use that information to calculate the true heading. As in the other examples, we note that east is to the right and west is to the left. To go from compass to magnetic, note that the arrow is pointing to the right towards magnetic, therefore magnetic will be greater than compass by two degrees, making the magnetic heading 053 magnetic. In the case of calculating true from magnetic, again the arrow pointing this time to the left 
is pointing to magnetic, meaning magnetic is greater than true. By 16 degrees, 53 minus 16, 0, 3, 7 degrees true. That gives us the true heading of the aircraft. What we need is the true bearing. And to find the true bearing, we need to take the true heading plus the applicable relative bearing. Heading plus relative bearing equals bearing 2. The heading we know is 037 true. The relative bearing we know to be 060 degrees. Add them both together, gives us a bearing 2 of 097 degrees true. So this angle at this point is 097 degrees true. However, that's the angle measured at the aircraft in an easterly direction. If we want to find the angle here, we can either calculate the easterly angle at the landmark position or the westerly angle at the aircraft position. What I suggest you do is do the aircraft angle in the westerly direction because that is quite simply the opposite of 097 degrees true. All we have to do is to add 180 degrees and that gives us 277 degrees true. Look at the sizes of the two angles. The aircraft angle is smaller than the landmark angle, meaning that at landmark it must be greater than 277 degrees true. Check the optional answers. 250, can't be that. 278, possible. 277, it can't be that, it has to be larger. 276, can't be that either. So there is in fact only one optional answer that fits this uh, problem and it would have to be 278. However, I'm going to work through the numbers just to finish the question off. The difference between the great circle track at the aircraft position, which is 277 degrees true, and the great circle track at the landmark position, which we already know is greater than 277 true, is equal to what we call convergency. And convergency on a Lambert chart is equal to the change of longitude multiplied by a factor known as n. Now n is also known as the convergence factor and on a Lambert chart it is also known as the constant of the cone. But in all cases it is equal to the sine of the parallel of origin. How do we find the parallel of origin? The parallel of origin is simply the average of the two standard parallels. So the parallel of origin, in this case, would be the sum of 37 plus 65 divided by 2 equals 102 over 2 equals 51 degrees. So the parallel of the origin on this chart would be north 51 degrees. The value of n, convergence factor or constant of the cone, will be the sine of 51 degrees. And the sine of 51 degrees equals 0.766. So if we substitute these values into the formula, convergency is equal to the change of longitude, which is west 6 degrees same hemisphere, so we subtract minus 4 degrees 45 minutes equals 1 degree 15 minutes or 1.25 degrees. 15 minutes is a quarter of a degree. 1.25 degrees times n, which is 0.766. Multiply those together and it's approximately 1 degree. We know that the Great Circle Track at the landmark is greater than the Great Circle Track at the aircraft. Therefore, we simply add the 1 degree to it to give us a final value of 278 degrees true.